What's up, fellas? This is Hassan, the Style Jumper. You know, I was thinking that maybe we'll do something different and fun today, and I wanted to share with you some fun facts or some. I want to share with you guys 10 things that you might not know about me. So I wanted to start off by saying some of these you might know if you've been riding with me since the beginning, you may know a few of these, but overall there's a couple of things that I think you might find interesting and let us begin. You know, I used to make beats. I learned how to make beats when I worked for Apple. I used to make these beats and spend all of my time, hours and hours and hours learning GarageBand and then I graduated from GarageBand to Logic. So I did that for a couple of years and I enjoyed it and then, you know, just changed things up and got away from it. But I actually started introducing some of my beats in uh, the Jump School, actually the Jump School intro is one of my beats and I'll continue to drop beats here and there that are mine. Some of the ones I've played on the channel so far, unfortunately, they're not mine. These guys and gals who create these beats, these amazing tracks are awesome. But your boy got some work to do. Number two, to be honest, my shoe game isn't that tight. It actually is my weakest link and my weakest point of my style game. So I'm working to build that. And hey, for those of you out there who know someone who works for an amazing shoe company, Hit your boy up because I'm always down to review some amazing shoes. Number three, I am a budding artist. I've shared a couple of my pieces on the channel and I'm gonna continue to do it. I love it. It's something that relaxes me and I hope that I only get better with time and with practice. I either rock them on a couple of my shirts that I've worn when I usually wear graphic tees, they're always my art, as well as a couple of pieces that I've printed, one of which I gave my beloved mother for Mother's Day last year. Number four, I used to be a personal trainer and massage therapist. And truth be told, that's how I met my wife. So <laughs> I've been knowing my wife for almost 20 years. I met her in 2001. And at the time, obviously there was no social media, there was no cell phones really. And I had my business card, which I gave her my massage therapy card. She was new to LA and I gave her my card. And on the card, it said touch, which was the name of my business. So we touch, we heal. And little did I know after I gave her that card, she hit me up three days later and here we are. 20 years later together. She bending over. Claude Hammers. The Lord is my shepherd. He know what I want. Excuse me, brother. Miss Parker! Miss Parker! <laughs> Number five. I actually wear bow ties for a reason. And the reason why I wear bow ties is, for those of you who don't know, I have a 13-year-old son who is on the autism spectrum. And when I first learned about this, he yeah, obviously was a challenge and very frustrating and, and confusing because this was before like Autism Speaks and all these different programs dedicated to autism awareness. You know, the logo, if you will, or this, I guess it would be the symbol for autism is usually puzzle pieces and they were all random colors and that just didn't fit right with me. I just didn't like the color scheme, you know, me, ego, I don't know. But anyway, so I decided what would be a good way for me to represent my son on a day-to-day -day basis. So I taught myself how to tie a bow tie and I wore it almost every day for six years straight. I have now switched up a little bit. I wear neckties, but primarily I still wear bow ties all the time. Number six, I actually was a model back in the day. I started modeling uh, when I was in the Navy. I've done things from male calendars, swimsuit calendars, when your boy had a good body to um, working for Echo, Echo Unlimited. It was, you know, big uh, urban streetwear line that was popular in the early 2000s. I've rocked and uh, modeled for them for about three and a half, four years. And the last thing I modeled was um, actually Jordan Brand. I did the website for Jordan Brand back when I was in Seattle. So the last time officially 
I was a paid model was in 2008, if I'm not mistaken. So that was fun, but I got away from it. I you know, started raising my family, started working in corporate America and thought that that was the past. And it was only until these past recent years, 2018, where my coach suggested that I work and do the style jumper actually that's how it was created so short story i was talking to my coach i met my coach's name is david shans we were discussing and this is something i think you guys would be interested in understanding there's your gift and your purpose and so for me i felt like you know i have a gift which is understanding clothing and style and fit and so my purpose i believe is to ultimately help families understand how autism impacts you know children and their families and so when i had my first coaching call with him he was like okay so what are you trying to do and i was like well i want to do actually a children's book and the illustrator costs that i really want to work with cost ten thousand dollars and he was like okay how are you going to get ten thousand dollars and i said well i know for sure what my gift is. My gift is that I understand style and my purpose is I want to help kids and educate families with autism. So he suggested that why don't you use your gift to help you support your purpose. And so that took me on this journey of, which my first task was to wear something different every day for, it was either a month or two months. I wore something different every single day. And that began my journey of journaling what I was wearing and getting back into being comfortable shooting photos. And I didn't know how to shoot myself, so I began practicing how to shoot myself on my iPhone 6 at the time. And so I just kept practicing and practicing. And one of the things you guys won't believe was the one thing I was completely scared to death of is actually video. I was comfortable shooting photos and, you know, being in front of the camera with no voice but i was definitely scared of speaking like this and being in front of the camera so it just goes to show what happens when you push yourself in time of practicing and getting more and more comfortable with speaking in front of the camera and here we are today the style jumper is in full motion and i have all of you guys to thank for supporting me and believing in what i'm doing I will ultimately get back into my purpose, which is a children's book and program about autism. Number six, goofy fact is that I used to wear leg braces. When I was a little boy, I had, my legs were kind of twisted actually. And I had to sleep with these braces because one of my feet were straight like this and the other one was turned this way. So I had to sleep with these braces to help straighten out my legs which is crazy um and i think a part of it had to do with that i was a preemie so i was like three pounds being born and i guess maybe that was just a part of it that when i grew parts of my body didn't grow correctly which was my my feet so here i am was sleeping and wearing these braces and i remember and i hate that i got rid of them and i don't have them anymore but um hey such is life what are y'all staring at haven't you ever seen a little boy with braces on his legs before? Don't ever let anybody tell you they're better than you, Forrest. Number seven. I actually had a clothing line, fellas. I had a clothing line called Blue Jacket Denim. Short story about Blue Jacket. It was a men's contemporary denim line in which I still love denim a lot. I'm rocking a denim jacket today. The unique thing about Blue Jacket was that it was men's denim suits and sports coats. And one of the things that I saw at the time is that I had transitioned from, you know, wearing urban wear, because actually I used to give away all my clothes that I got from Echo. I would give it to my little bro and all my little cousins because there was a few things that I would keep. But overall, it just wasn't me. I was just, it was just my job. But I knew that I enjoyed denim and Blue Jacket was an homage to actually the Navy and the Blue Jacket's manual. We used to wear those, you know, military dungarees back in the day. They don't wear those anymore. It was those jean bell bottoms that the Navy used to have us rocking. But, you know, I wore them and 
um, started my line by actually using those dungarees and bleaching them out. And then I ended up uh, finding a seamstress as well as a pattern maker. And I learned how to design and use uh, Illustrator from actually TJ Walker, who is one of the uh, co-founders of Cross Colors. He's one of my mentors still to this day. He gave me the software and say, hey, if you wanna learn how to design, you need to learn this program. And he gave me some pre-designs that he, one of the companies that he uh, actually co-created. He just gave me a lot of the, the, the drafts of it really and said, okay, start creating and learn. So that's what I did. <laughs> One of the saddest stories of my life is that Blue Jacket ended. One was I had a cease and dismiss letter sent to me by uh, the Blue Jackets in Ohio hockey team, uh, which really, really broke my heart. And then the worst part of that was that during that same time, I had a really bad brunt of my production go bad. I had the biggest order of my life, which was with Fred Siegel in Santa Monica. For those of you who don't know what Fred Siegel is, it was the place in LA where all the celebs and stylists would go to get a lot of their clothes. And usually what would happen is those that you would get your clothes in Fred Siegel and then the normal stores, the, the traditional chain stores would actually start seeking you out. So my production run went bad. Uh, they had all my clothes in China. And when it finally came back, everything was terrible. And I actually quit. I gave up. I gave up everything. I ran out of money and I uh, was heartbroken and frustrated. It was to me my big deal, my big chance, my big opportunity. And I didn't really have a lot of support financially after that, so I couldn't recoup the money. And lo and behold, man, I stopped. And that's really was the beginning to the end of everything with me in regards to fashion, modeling, and design. But here we are, you might see that again, but actually there's some pictures here that I'll share with you that you may or may not have seen that I posted of me in my blue jacket. I still only have two of my pieces left, two jackets. One is a suit jacket and the other is a sport coat. Tell me what you think about that, I'm really curious. Number eight, I am absolutely obsessed with the 1962 Impala. Two-door, hardtop, or convertible. It's my absolute favorite car in the world. There's only one other car that I love. It's close, it's, it's really close, which is a 51 Mercury. 51, 50, and 49 Merc. But the 62 Impala is the most beautiful Impala in my mind. And one of the things that most of us are used to is the 64, right? So, well, two things really inspired me about this car. One was Boys in the Hood. That gold 64 Impala was absolutely amazing. And then secondly, it was Ice Cube's video, Today Was a Good Day. And I knew at 17, 18 years old that I was gonna have an Impala. I don't know how I was gonna find it, but I did. So I had a 62 Impala at 18 years old and I had it for a couple of years until I turned 21 and I left and joined the Navy and sadly to say we let it go down, down, down. it still hurts me to this day some random ordinance in our community where my parents lived you couldn't have a car in your yard that wasn't running or wasn't moving constantly and at the time it stopped running and we got rid of it but i will get me another 62 so if you know someone who got a 62 if you see one Hit your boy up. Number 10, I wrote a book. It's one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. It's being edited right now, and it's called Why Style Matters, the mindset of dressing well and how it impacts our lives. And I can't wait for it to come out. Stay tuned. Let me know in the comments if you were excited again about having an opportunity to receive this book. I can't wait for it. And I have a bonus for you. So the bonus is, guys, I have been working diligently on an online course for CEOs and entrepreneurs, and it's called The Stylish CEO. I am in the thoroughs of getting it out, and as soon as I get it out, guys, I think for those of you who are interested in improving your style as a business owner, 
in as an entrepreneur. This is a phenomenal course for you. Stay tuned for that. I'll be talking about it. I'm really excited about it and I know it's going to help a lot of people, a lot of guys and gals. If you're interested, please let me know in the comments if this is something else you'll be interested in knowing about. If you want to see what I'm wearing on a day-to-day -day basis, check out my Instagram. There you'll find a ton of looks that maybe you can choose from or at least get some inspiration. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you have any questions or suggestions, leave it in the comments below. And if you like this content, fellas, share it with your stylish friends. And remember, when you leave home today in safety, walk out with style, confidence, and etiquette. And fellas, we all got a story to tell. There's always going to be something that you can share that enlightens you and enlightens other. And I'll see you.